So the topic today is organizational overview. And uh, this is my introduction. So in uh, this particular topic, the organization will be brought out as one that is organized through several levels. And the levels will greatly assist the organization to run its programs in a more organized manner so as to, so as to help foster teamwork within the organization. So when we talk about uh, an overview, we are actually going to look at uh, the structure, how, like for example, the media structure, what you expect. It might not be exactly the way it is, or the, the way I'm going to show you, but it is going to be more or less the same. Because uh, you remember we said uh, a bigger organization, you expect the structure to be big. A small organization, you expect the structure also to be, to be small. So the structure of an organization depends on how big or how small the organization is. So therefore, our objective for this particular topic are, is that at the end or by the end of this topic, you should be able to, number one, define what is an organizational structure. Number two, you must be able to give highlights of the importance of having an organizational structure in an organization. So there are some importance of having an organizational structure. Like when I visit an organization, like if I go to Airtel and I look at its structure, I'll know where to air my views. So if I have maybe a complaint concerning maybe airtime, I know which department I will take my uh, my complaint. The next thing is that uh, we are going to outline, so by the end of this course, you must be able to outline how the organizational structure helps foster teamwork within organization. Because you realize that uh, every, every department, the people who work in that particular department, more or less they have done the same course. So in accounting, you'll find that almost everybody knows accounts. You go to media department, you realize that everybody there, almost everybody, is uh, aware of the media and how it functions, etc., etc. Remember, we looked at uh, features of management, and we said that uh, one feature of management is that it is multidisciplinary. Another principle of management, we said that. Uh, no, another feature of management is that uh, it is multidisciplinary one. Next is that uh, there is what we call a uh, division of labor, that uh, people are categorized according to their specialization. I hope you remember that. Now, without wasting time, uh, I'll go straight to topic four. And in this topic four, we have what we call a structure. This structure will, uh, or maybe I can say by, but we can actually say that the structure of, an, of a media house is best analyzed and understood within the coalition of concept of organization. Now, I want to share this. I don't know that it will be shared. I want to share my screen so that you can see this particular structure. I want you to see this particular structure. I hope you can see it. Stephen, can you see it? It's loading. It is loading. 
Okay, there is an error. It is the screen, whatever has, uh, has ended. They're telling me that there is an error. So let's share it again. Let's see whether it will share. I don't know, I think a problem or not share something. I'm waiting, it is still loading. It is still loading. Yeah, it can be seen now. From my end, I can see it. Steven, can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, this one is in your notes. This one is in your notes. Uh, so when you look at that particular structure, most of the media houses, or most of the organization in a media, uh, most of the uh, media house of organization, they look at that. So the first thing that you see there is the shareholder. So shareholders, you can so share see the shareholders are actually please if you have your microphone on it off. If you have your microphone on, put it off. Thank you. So we are saying shareholders are like these people. It's like I mean a company is like a cake whereby people buy that particular piece of cake. And this particular key piece of cake, you buy according to the weight of your pocket. If you have very little money, then you buy a small piece of cake. If you have a lot of money, you can even buy half of the cake. But you can, it's not always good. It is not always legal for somebody to buy a whole company. So, uh, so you'll find that we have major shareholders and minor shareholders in a company. Then apart from the shareholders, uh, we have the board of directors. So the board of directors, most of the time, they are selected by the shareholders. So the shareholders are the people that elect the board of directors. Remember, these are the people who you have heard of uh, board meetings. These are the people who are in board meetings. And there are people, you remember when we were looking at the roles of the CEO, the roles of the shareholders, it is, it is, those things. We said that the board of directors, the CEO is one of the members of the board of directors. Why? Because it is the board of directors that has elected or that has selected this particular person to be the CEO. Just like Royal Media Service. We have uh, the owner, the proprietor. The proprietor is uh, SK Masharia. Then from SK Masharia, I, I believe citizen is not 
has not welcomed the, uh, the the IPO initial public has not given the initial public offer, so it is not owned by any. So we have the only shareholder there is the proprietor. Then from the pro, uh, the proprietor we have the board of directors. So the board of directors are the people that usually they do what they uh, they appoint various heads heads of various heads of department but not uh, actually uh not various heads of department by those people who take very senior positions in the organization like the ceo they can also uh elect uh, or appoint the chief uh the deputy chief executive or the chief uh deputy ceo then from there we have the managing director <clears throat> Managing director all has been appointed by the board of directors. So the managing director, or we can call him the CEO or the president of the company. Sometimes it is, he is called uh, the manager or something like that. But here we are calling him the managing director. So the managing director is the is the is actually appointed by the board of directors. Then from the managing directors. This is what he works on. The people under him is the administration. The people under managing director is the marketing. Remember, these are departments. Administration is a department called administration department. Then we have marketing department. Then we have editorial department. And then we have technical department. So the managing director is in charge of appointing the head of department in that particular organization that he has been given or that particular media house or media organization then when we come to our administration administration is divided into three major categories we have finance remember an organization cannot run without finance we need to know we need to have a a, a, a department that uh, foresee how our finances are or that are capable of keeping our financial records so we have finances we have legal every organization needs to have a legal department remember this is a media house so most of the time reporters most of the time uh listeners and uh, viewers will will take us to court because of one or two three things that you are not doing right for example when you talk about defamation or libel or even slander they will take you so we need a legal department and then we need transport we cannot have a media house without transport section because we need to carry our equipment For example, we need to go and cover news somewhere, maybe in uh, maybe Meru. We need uh, transport. Transport uh, simply means that this particular department is in charge of everything that includes transportation. Then from there, we have marketing department. And the marketing department, we have circulation. We can also call it distribution. Circulation, like for example, when you talk about newspaper, after the newspaper has been worked on by the editors, the sub editors, the reporters, the projection editors, the revised editors, etc., etc., it is packaged. And once it is packaged, it needs to get to the reader. It needs to get to me. It needs to get to you conveniently so that you can buy it so that is called circulation and distribution so marketing is in charge of circulation and distribution so in law when you talk about distribution distribution in law or in media law and ethics i believe i will be able to meet you and teach you media law and ethics distribution mean, means to lend to lend Distribution means to do what? It also means uh, 
to rent, we have to lend to rent. It also means to hire. Also, it means to uh, yeah to hire, to rent, to lend, to rent, and also to sell, to sell. That is distribution, or that is what we call circulation in law. Then from there we have editorial department. Remember we said that the head of the, the editorial department is the chief editor. Like for example, when you go to Citizen, the chief editor, the editor in chief, is usually appointed by the owner. If you go to uh, Nation, the editor in chief is usually appointed by the owner. So he reports to the owner, not the shareholders. He reports to the owner directly. Then from there, we have uh, the technical team. When you talk about the technical team, as far as print is concerned, we are talking about pre-press, we are talking about printing, we are talking about packaging, we are talking about uh, retouching and retouching photographs, resizing and cropping, all those things. So is there any question on that section? I wanted you to see the diagram. So if there's no question, then we go to shared notes. We need to share our notes there. So we are going to look at the, what we call the concept of an organizational model. We're going to look at the concept of an organizational model. Let's look at the concept of an organizational model. A component of an organizational model, not concept. Co uh, components of an organizational model. For every organizational model, when you talk about components, first of all, we are talking about, it's like we are talking about elements. So the synonyms of component are, we can call them mechanisms, we can call them gears or workings, or the apparatus. The apparatuses, the apparatuses of an organization. We can call them also the elements. The components of an organizational model. Number one, we have what we call technology. We have technology. So number one, we have technology. So what happens when you talk about technology? Actually, technology refers to the process of set, to processes or set of tasks by which input is acted on in order to produce output. Remember we said that a computer is a garbage in, garbage out. So everything that happens in a media house is technology. Nowadays, it's all about technology. Remember, we also have the virtual studio. Virtual studio is a studio that has been created used by use of technology. It might be an empty room, but when we look at it, when the output is given to the audiences, we see a very beautiful uh, news anchoring room. But now that one is technology and that background that is created by technology is what we call the virtual background. In short, there is no background it has been created by the computer so many studios are operating under what we call the virtual uh, studio so we have said that uh, it refers to the process processes or set of tasks by which input is acted on in order to produce output so technology has has got three facets so we have operation technology so A, we have operations technology. We can have A. 
apa we can have operations technology so what do we mean by saying operations technology an operations technology is uh is the way an organization operates it is all about equipping and sequencing activities in the workflow that is the way we are operating with an uh, within an organization as employee in a media house so that at the end of the day the audiences can have their news now that is called operations technology then we have what we call materials technology so b is materials technology We have materials technology and when we talk about materials technology we are talking about the materials that are used in a particular work like for example if you go to a media house you'd expect to see what you'd expect to see uh you'd expect to see a, a newspaper or a newspaper being produced you'd expect to see paint if it's a newspaper production company you'll be expected to see things like uh things like uh what we call uh they are they are called what they are called uh templates iron templates iron sheet templates we are going to see them etc etc and then there is what we call knowledge technology knowledge can, technology is simply the knowledge and skills that is needed in a particular work or that is needed in doing a particular piece of work. Like for example, when you're done with your course, this is media, media, you will have that knowledge technology. I expect that at the end of this particular course, course that you're doing in general, I'm not the unit, you'll be able, you'll be in a position to hold a camera, event, and take photographs very nice photographs i expect that you be in a position to edit a movie or a clip i expect you that you be in a position to edit a video clip i also expect that you be able to write very well i'm talking about writing news writing You'll be able to write the way very well and you'll be able to speak like a journalist if for example your work is to become, i mean uh, your dream is to become a a news anchor we expect you to be reading fluently and uh, fluently and eloquently so that is called the knowledge technology everybody has got the knowledge technology with it if you go to a mechanic he has the knowledge technology if you go to uh, a butcher, he has his knowledge technology. If you go to a shopkeeper, he has his knowledge technology. So people have got knowledge technology and that's why they are employed to work in whatever organization that they work for and in whatever department that they are in in a certain organization. So, so we have looked at three technologies. We have looked at operations, we have looked at materials, and we have looked at the knowledge. Remember material technology, like if you're talking about university or in a school, material technology includes, let's say for example, uh, the projectors, it includes the seats that you're sitting on, it includes also the whiteboards and the mark pens that you're using. That is material technology. When you talk about operations technology, it is the equipping of it is the equipping of things in an organization so that things run on smoothly like when you equip computers in an organization when you equip biometrics in an organization when you equip things like uh, printers when you equip things like uh, 
scanners those are opera uh, operations technology So we have looked at one, uh, what we call component of uh, organization, and we have looked at technology. So after technology, we have something else called uh, environment. After technology, we have the environment. The environment. Every organization has got an environment. We have the environment. Let me slide it down. This is our number two. Environment. Remember, environment uh, does not mean outside. When you're talking about environment in a uh, in an organization uh, that is surrounding the organization, we are talking about things like competitors, things like uh, we have competitors, we have uh, readers, customers, we have such things. Such things. Uh, uh, one of the environment. We are going to look at this. Please kindly switch off your microphone. Yvette, your microphone is on. Yvette, switch off your microphone or, or I'll switch it off for you. Let me switch it off for you. So we have the environment, and when you talk about environment, we are talking about external providers. External providers are people who provide us with, with, uh, with, uh, with skills. They also provide us with materials. They provide us with supplies. Like for example, we can have an external provider that provides us with equipment, cameras. We can have an external provider that uh, provides us with what we call, uh, let's say, for example, vehicles, et cetera, et cetera. Then apart from that, we have customers. Customers form what we call an environment. And when you talk about customers, they differ from those of other establishment. They differ from those of other establishment because we are talking about the media. In that, they have one group who buy the product or who watch the product or who listens to the product. They also have another group who buy space in the product. That is advertisers. That is advertisers. So customers, as far as media is concerned, they differ from those of others as other establishment. So these are people who watch, these are the people who read, these are the people who listen to the news or to the materials that we produce for them. And as far as customers are concerned, we also have readers. Readers are people who read stories that we have written for them to read. And then we have advertisers. Advertisers are people who advertise their products on our newspaper. So when you talk about advertisers, advertisers can be categorized into various category. Like for example, we can have a small time advertiser. These are the people who buy spaces in lines of text. In lines of text, that is they buy small text, small spaces. 
like when you buy today's newspaper, there is that section called uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, it is going. It is called uh, whereby classi uh, classified classified section. You'll find that there are so many customers that have bought small spaces in the newspaper to advertise maybe a chamber or maybe a plot, maybe a car, maybe a, a rental house, etc. And then we have big times, big timers. Big timers are advertisers who actually do what? They buy, they can even buy two pages. They can buy a whole page and still buy another one. A very good example of big timers are people like Airtel, Safaricom, Ministries. Those are big timers. Then we have what we call the big corporations advertisers. Big corporations advertisers. So these people, they channel their product by an advertising agency. So they go through advertising agencies. Instead of going to the media directly, they pass through the advertising agency. Then the advertising agencies, they present them to the media. So that's how it is. These are big corporations, big organizations. They can also, we, we, we are told that uh, advertisers can also go through advertising consultants before they finally reach an advertising agency. So there are organizations that before they advertise their products, they first of all go through a consultant. Remember we have a consultancy and we have an advertising agency. So we can have somebody advising us and then we can now go for the, uh, for the agency. We are still on what we call the environment. And under the environment, remember we have looked at, under the environment, we have looked at uh, customers. And we have said that our customers can be, we have been, we, we have looked at external providers. And we have said that our external providers can be our customers, of which you have said that our customer differs from those of other establishments. We have also said, that our external providers can also be readers. Readers are people who read what we have written. We also have advertisers as our what? As, uh, as our customers. We also have uh, suppliers. Suppliers, now this one is not our customers, but this one are, these ones are our external providers. Please, uh, let me repeat again. Uh, when you talk about environment, the environment is divided into three classification. We have external providers. For the sake of understanding, I'm repeating again. We have external providers, we have customers, and we have competitors. So the environment is divided into three portions, external providers, customers, and competitors. So, when you talk about uh, customers, customers, our customers are readers, our customers are also advertisers. Our customers are readers and they are also adv our advertisers. Then we have said that our advertisers are classified into three sections. We have the small advertisers, we have the big timers, and then we have the big corporations advertisers. Big corporation advertisers, we say that sometimes they go through a who? They go through a consultancy, they are advised, and then they go through, I mean, after that, they, they, they can decide to go through a, an agency so that they can be given a space or space in a media or in the media. Then apart from uh, our customers, we have uh, people like suppliers. People like suppliers are our external providers. Our external providers are suppliers. We also have financiers. Financiers. 
remember suppliers they supply they if it is a, a media i mean a newspaper production company or media they provide us with papers that are used to print the newspaper they also furnish papers with news items or give tips of other news information it is it is it and then we have the financiers the financiers are our external what they are our external providers remember an organization can run, cannot run without finances sometimes it depends i mean it, it actually uh, forces them to go and take a loan so uh, so that to run so that to run so therefore financiers are number one they are banks We also have what we call capitalization. We also have uh, capitalization. Maybe you're looking at what you have put in the bank. And then we have, uh, those are the investors. Remember our investors can also lend us some money. Like the investors eh, can also own us, uh, give us some money or provide us with some money. So those, all those are our, what we call, uh, our external providers. Unless there is a question, I want to move to something else. I want to look at uh, how the editorial performance influences the circulation of the newspaper. Event, good afternoon. You are now good on. afternoon. Yeah, you joined us uh, with your microphone on. So we could hear our echoes from your end. That's why I switched you off. I switch to your microphone off. Emma, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What have you learned? I can see you are on and off. What have you learned from what already we have discussed? The component of the organization model. Uh, we have the mm -hmm. technology and the environment. Well, under technology, we have operational tools, as you know, the uh, like materials, the projectors, those things. Under the environment, we have the, it is categorized into three. We have the external providers, the competitors, and the customers. Uh, the external providers are the suppliers, the financiers, which are the banks, the, uh, the investors. Well, and our customers. Where were you last week? Yeah? Where were you last week? Last week? Yes. I didn't see you in this class. That reminds me that you are not there. Where were you? Um, ask me. Okay, what did we learn last week? Huh? What did we learn last week? Emma, I'm talking to you. You have not responded to my question. I think I don't know that. You don't know that? What is that? 
that you don't know. You don't know what we did. Emma, I'm talking to you. If it is now tell us what Emma has not told us. We are waiting for you to tell us what Emma has not told us. Yvette has disappeared. Then she will appear again. So let's look at how editorial performance influences uh, circulation of newspaper. Number one, uh, you must be able to understand what the editorial does. The editorial is a department that deals with uh, the editing of the newspaper. It also deals with uh, making sure that the news is packaged. It also deals with making sure that the, the newspaper has been uh, assembled together and it has been distributed to the relevant or the customer. Now that is the work of the editorial. So in the editorial, we usually start with what we call a collection of news. After collection of news, then it runs on the news desk. Once it lands on the news desk, it is sorted and it is given, it goes to the next available editor. Now it passes through several editors, like five editors. When, an ed uh, when an, a reporter goes outside to collect news, it goes through like five editors before it is published on the, on the paper. And the first editor to edit, I mean, the first editor is the person who has written that news or who is reporting that news so if that if you you'll be the first editor suppose uh you get a job in a nation media group you become the first editor first of all you edit your story then after editing your story you do what you take it to the news desk then the news desk get, uh, looks at the stories and then sorts them and then they are taken to the next editor to do what? To edit those stories. Until those stories are perfect or they are next to perfection, that's when they are put in the newspaper for people to read. Now, why am I telling you this? I am telling you this so that you know what uh, editorial is. So that is editorial. Apart from editorial, there is what we call uh, there is uh, what we call uh, now I have talked about editorial. Now the topic is how the editorial performance influences circulation of newspaper. That the work that the, the, the editors are doing in the in the editorial department, how does it influence? the circulation of that particular paper. One thing you should note is that uh, not only newspaper, but media in general, depends a lot on advertising. Organization, media organizations depend so much on advertising. Without advertising, organization, media organizations cannot survive. They will just close down. Like there is a, a, a rumor that is going around that K24 is about to be closed. Why? Because they are lacking on advertisers. So advertisers is one of the major source of income for every media house, 
be it a news a news uh, a news giving a new i mean a news uh, dissemination media house be it what we call uh, an entertainment media house be it what we call any media house in short any media house depends on advertising so an advert, an advert like for example an advert can go for if you are to put it in the front page of the newspaper i was talking to an uh, an, an agent an agent an advertising agent and he was telling me that they charge if you're going to put your story on the first page of the newspaper they charge 900,000 per, per advert. Now you can imagine, we are doing this advert for the next like two months. How much will I have paid as an organization? So 900,000 times two months is 60 days times 60. So 900,000 times 60 days, that's a lot of money. So that is where most of the organization get money I mean, most of the media organizations get money to do what? To pay their overhead, to pay their employees, to pay their rent, to pay, uh, to buy machines, to, uh, to hire people, etc., etc. Now, how does the performance, editorial performance, influence the circulation of the newspaper? In short, we are saying. Now, an advertiser, before we go there, an advertiser is just like a person selling. So he's looking for a market. This advertiser is looking for a market where he can sell his products and services. Remember, for your goods to be bought as a marketer or as a seller, for the, your goods to be bought as a seller, you usually look at a market that has got many people. You don't just go to a market that has very small, very, very few numbers or very few people. If you go to a market that has got very few people, chances are you might not sell your products or you might sell your product, but the customers will be very few. So therefore, this particular person called an advertiser is going to look for a market that has so many people and his market is the newspaper so he's going to look for a newspaper that most of the time is usually bought usually read by a lot of people like in kenya we can say that nation is the most common newspaper it's actually the not the most common but it is the most bought newspaper by people so if i was to add advertise my university or my school i'll go to nation newspaper because i know it targets so many people but if i'm going to buy uh, to take my product to a newspaper called the citizen there is a newspaper called the citizen then i'm very sure that uh, many people will not buy my product many people will not know about my my product the same case with tv when we advertise our products, we look at a TV station that many people watch. Like, I will not advertise on Meru TV, because I know very well, Emma, Kazure, many people don't watch Meru TV. Meru TV is only for a classified audiences, and these are the Meru people. So I will look for a TV station that I know this majority, there is a diverse world, there is diverse audience, there is a lot of people who are watching, classified in terms of, you, can, you cannot even be able to classify them because it is diverse. They are different, they are children, they are old women, they are various tribes, etc., etc. So I will look for a maybe citizen TV. Citizen TV is mo most of the time is watched by many. If not citizen, then I will look for something like uh, KTN. 
KTN is another one people watch a lot. Eh? If not KTN, I will go for NTV. If not NTV, I will go for. I don't think I have another one, but I think I will go for those because I need my product to be known by many people. But if I want my product to be only known by a classified type of audience, then I'll go to a classified what? A classified uh, TV station or a classified radio station, Meru TV, Inoro TV, Kameme TV, Weru TV. Those, eh? those are the ones that I'll go for. Because uh, my product is for classified people. If, for example, um a farmer and I want to sell my farm produce or maybe for example I want my farm produce or my farm equipment I'll go to farmers TV because that is where we have a classification of farmers but if I want every Tom Dick and Harry to know then I'll go to citizen nobody would want to waste money to advertise his products or services to a TV station, to a radio station, or to a newspaper that is not read by people. That one will be a waste of a waste of time. Another thing, when you talk about radio, the same case. When I want to advertise my school, when I want to advertise my products, I'll go for I'll go for which TV event, radio station. Suppose you want to advertise your products, which TV radio station will you go for? Yvette, are we together? Um, radio Jumbo. Radio Jumbo. Radio Jumbo. Uh-huh. Yeah. And which other one? Milele. Milele FM. Emma, which one will you, will you use to advertise your products? Radio Maisha. Radio Maisha. Uh, Me, I will go for classic, I mean a classic 105. Am I on the right track, Yvette, if I go for classic 105? No. Yvette, I'm asking a question. Am I on okay. the right track? Maybe. Okay, it depends on the product. Emma Kazure, we, we should go for, to, for Meru TV. What? We should go for Meru TV. No. Stephen, Mama, which one will you prefer? Kiss, kiss. Huh? Kiss 100.3. Kiss 100. Yes. Remember when you're advertising your product, well, you should uh, add. Uh huh. Because? Many people listen to it. Many people listen to it. Yeah. The best way, uh, anyway, it is okay. The best way to know whether a media house is listened to by many people is to go to the media monitors. Media monitors are people who monitors the media and how, how, how it works. One of the media monitors is Sinovate. Sinovate monitors the media. So it can tell you that TV uh, citizen is watched by many. Again, uh, we have uh, the CCK. They monitor the media so much. So they can tell you citizen has got so many people who watch, that, who watch it. So an advertiser usually go to the media monitors and they are given what we call ratings. Ratings is uh, how they have been rated by these media monitors, how they have been rated. Like uh, you can find that citizen has been rated as number one, uh, maybe uh, classic 105 has been rated as number two, and then uh, Radio Maisha has been rated as number three. So an advertiser will go for ratings, then decide I'm going to advertise my product on 
a particular TV station based on the ratings that I've received maybe from CCK or from Sinovate. Now, once you get the ratings, what do you do? You just go and pick that particular media. Uh, when you get the ratings, the, the next thing you, go, you do is look for space. Look for space. Sometimes you come to realize that uh, spaces is, uh, a space is so much occupied. Like, for example, if you are to advertise a product between, uh, seven, and, uh, between seven and 10, 7 and 10 p.m., you come to realize that that space is fully booked by many companies. To an extent that you are told that this space will be free in the next five years. So there are companies that book spaces until five years. So you come to realize that if you are booking a space between uh, between 7 and 10 p.m., some organization, media organization will tell you this space is fully booked until next year or until and until the next three years. So the ne that, that is the next step that you do as an advertiser. The same case happens to newspapers. You go there and then they tell you. So they tell you that the first three pages have been booked by Safaricom for the next five years. So you will wait until five years are over. Remember we are looking at that media house that, I mean that, that uh, TV station that newspaper or that uh, radio station that is that that has got so many audiences receiving receiving information or receiving information then we are back to our question how the editorial performance influences the circulation of newspaper to circulate means what to circulate means how it gets to many people or how it gets to few people, or how it gets to people in, in short. So the editorial is a key, is a key what? Is a key factor in making sure that the newspaper is bought. If the editorial department does shoddy work, then that means that newspaper might not be bought. If a TV station brings a program that is not attracting audiences, then that means audiences will run from that TV station and will go to another TV station to watch that particular what? That particular uh, a, a, a particular program. And therefore, when audiences run, you get low rates. And when the advertiser goes to get the rates, he's told citizen is number three and nation is number one. So he will go to nation. And all this is the work of the editorial. That's why you find that many media houses, they fight so much to bring very nice programs. Programs that will attract the readers, the viewer, and the listeners' attention. So that we have so many viewers, we have so many listeners, we have so many readers. And so that the advertiser can be told by the media monitors that this is the leading the leading tv the leading radio or the leading newspaper production i mean uh, leading newspaper production company or media house then the then uh, the advertiser runs to it so that's how it is when an editorial uh, editor does or the editorial department does a very poor job of selecting programs, of designing the page for the newspaper, then that means that paper will not circulate properly. People buy newspaper looking at how it looks like, maybe the headlines, how do the headlines look like? Are they appealing headlines? Are they attracting to the reader's attention? Are they attractive to, to people? Then when it is attractive, people buy that particular newspaper and now circulation of the newspaper grows higher or goes, goes up. 
So if it goes down, then that means the advertiser runs away. If it goes up, you are attracting advertisers. So in short, the only person, everybody in the media house or audiences are very important. Audiences are very important. Even if you are watching programs and you're not paying for them. Even if you are watching soap operas and you're not paying for them on Citizen, you're not paying for them on uh, KTN, you're not paying for them on Nation. Just remember that you're actually doing a very good job of watching that soap opera because the ratings of that particular uh, media house is going up and therefore more advertisers are attracted. So Emma, what have I said? Emma, actually you can compare Uji. Tell us what have I said? You have said mm. that that the editorial the editorial is essential in the circulation in circulation since the if they will not decide the pages well all the programs if they will not bring exciting programs then that material will not circulate well it will have low circulation but if they bring <laughs> but if they bring interesting shows uh, or they design the newspaper well the secretion will be high Yvette tell us what Emma has not told us Yvette we are waiting in the performance Mm, it depends on also the place that you air your air your let me say what you're going to do like maybe if you have an advertisement mm. putting it like putting it you should put it in a let me say you should advertise it in a station that many people will see or a radio station that many people will hear so that will have a good market. Steven, tell us what uh, Emma and uh, Yvette has not told uh, has not told us. About about that. About how the editorial performance influences circulation of the newspaper. We are waiting, Steven. I can't think of anything right now. Right now. I can't. You can you stop screen sharing because I can't hear you. Now tell us. I was saying I can't think of anything right now. Anyway, let's go to something else. Let's go to something else. And this time around, I'm sharing the screen. I hope you can hear me. If you can't hear me, write something. Share the screen. Let it download. Emma, can you see that? Yeah. 
Yes, I can see. Now, I've talked about how uh, how uh, the editorial performance actually influences the circulation of a newspaper. Now, when a newspaper is doing properly, we usually call it upward spiral. In upward spiral, you come to realize that there is editorial, superior editorial performance that the, the editorial department is doing very nice work, is doing a very good work. So we call it super, superior editorial performance. Then when there is what we call superior editorial performance, advertise, advertisements are attracted. In short, advertisers are attracted. When there is superior editorial performance, that means there will be a lot of people asking for that particular paper or buying that particular newspaper or watching your program or listening to your program then there is uh, the advertisers will come and do what and ask for space where they can actually advertise their products then there is high circulation numbers in an upward circulation Whenever there is advertisement attract, advertisement are attracted, there is also high circulation numbers. So you find that newspaper is bought, newspaper is bought. So like, for example, there are times you go to buy a newspaper and you're told newspapers in Asia to be Bakisha standard. We don't have any more newspaper as far as nation is concerned. We have the standard. That means that there was high circulation that day. Why? Because the editorial did their work perfectly. But when they do it poorly, we are going to see that. Eh? So there is high circulation numbers, and then there is financial, financial what? Financial basis is built, is established. So when there, there is a lot of newspaper being sold, then we get more money in an organization. So we have a, a financial, a stable financial background or a, speci a, a, a stronger financial base. We establish a very strong financial base. What if, what if uh, the newspaper is not bought? If the newspaper is not doing well, the advertisers are not coming, then that, we call it the downward spiral. In the downward spiral, we have inferior editorial performance. Inferior editorial performance simply means that the editors are not doing their work properly. Even the program that they are being brought on TV, they are not attractive. The discussions on radios are not appealing. The news on the newspaper is not appealing at all. So that means people there are called the editorial, I mean, the editorial department is not doing its work. And if it is not doing its work, there will be few advert advertisements attracted. So we are going to attra attract very few advertisers. Why? Because in the first place, we don't have the who, the audiences to listen to our programs, which are very boring. We don't have the audiences to buy our newspaper, which are very boring and unattracted or unattractive. Then from there, we have low circulation figures. So you find that people, the people who are buying newspapers are very few. Then that means the advertiser who had advertised with you a product there just gave you like he actually gave you free money. Then from there, we have what we call the low financial base you have very little finances as an organization very little finances to an extent you cannot pay your rent very little finances to an extent you cannot uh, buy state of art equipment very few finances to an extent that you cannot be able to pay your workers very few finances to an extent that you cannot buy vehicles to do what to help you collect news or collect news or report news from uh, maybe 
from the from from the ground or something like that and that is how it is that's how it is downward spiral is for the newspaper that is not doing very well and upward spiral is for the newspaper that is working very nicely and all this depends on what the editorial the editorial department so that's why we are saying how the editorial performance influences the circulation of newspaper that is how it influences the circulation of newspaper so kipata gazeti ambao mtu hanunui jua shida si mwenye anauza shida si mwenye reprint ali package shida ni editorial department ni wale ambao hawaon those who are working working in the offices that is where the problem is so whenever an organization performs poorly we have very poor ed ed editorial department that organization you come to realize that it is going to die just like i started by saying like for example you're talking about k24 k24 you realize that there are so many people who have been laid off and the organization is actually going down why because we have inferior editorial performance they are doing very poor job and still they are being paid any question Do we have any question? Yvette? No, I don't have any question. Yeah, the reason why I... Anyway, Stephen? No. Emma, do you have any question for me? No. Why? No. <laughs> Say to hi to those people who are surrounding you and they are laughing when you're answering questions. Tell them up on your COVID medication. Anyway, okay, uh, I, will. I, will, uh, I will stop at that point. If there is no question, I will open the notes immediately. And my uh, in every unit, we usually have what we call uh, an activity. Now the activity that I'm going to tell you to do today, the activity that you're going to do today is, I want you to, I want you to, activity 4.2, you will see it, eh? that in 250 words, summarize the importance of organizational structure to an organization of your choice. You summarize, the importance of the organizational structure to an organization of your choice. So, Kadhure, you can choose to work on citizen. Steven can choose to work on a nation. And Steven can choose to work on a KTN. So, that is only 250 words. Journal provided. I will give you a journal that you're supposed to post immediately. So, Kien Apocalypse on a big blue button. I will post a journal where you are supposed to do what? Excuse me. A journal there where you are supposed to do. Yes. We are not getting you. You're breaking. We are not getting you. Okay. Now, are you getting me, Yvette? Yes. Now, what I'm saying is that uh, we are done with that particular topic. Let me repeat again. And because we are done with that particular topic, we still have some time. I want you to go to topic four. 
where we have written learning activities. So I want you to go to learning activities 4.2. In that learning activity 4.2, it reads like this. In 250 words, summarize the importance of the organizational structure to an organization of your choice. Post your article in the journal provided. Post your article in the journal provided. So as we speak with you, the journal will be provided. Uh, you remember where you clicked to get into this particular meeting, the big blue button. So I'll post the journal there. So you're supposed to, like for example, Yvette, you, you can have an, uh, an organization of your choice can be KTN, Steven, it can be Nation, and Emma, it can be Citizen. So you choose an organization of your choice, and then you tell us the importance of the organizational structure. So I'm going to, po uh, to put a journal there that you're supposed to put your answer there. Is there any question? Do we have a question? So I am putting a journal there. I've only cl I've, I clicked on the journal. So you provide us with that particular uh, thing. So the journal name, I'm going to call it uh, Importance of an Organizational Structure. To Melona Yvette. Yvette. Okay, oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, have you understood what I've said? Yes. As we are speaking, I'm actually typing the journal. I'm actually typing uh, importance of an organizational structure. Naswali, Emma. Emma, do you have a question? No. So as we speak with you, that's what I'm posting. So I'll tell you when it is ready. Kwajia tu hapo nitakuambia. That is activity 4.2. Activity 4.2. Hey, what in end on our happy? Remember everything that you're given here, it will be marked. Everything that I give you, don't take it for granted. When you know I end up in the apology. So I am going to give that journal one day. So kona siku moja na ni leo. Siku ya leo ikisha na ujafanya kazi yako, that particular journal will close itself. It will close itself automatically. So make sure that uh, yeah, I've formed the journal. You can click and see. It is already there. It is already there. Steven Umayona. The journal is there. Yeah. So can we do that work? Remember, if you don't post them today, if you don't post anything there, 
mimi si itakuwa wakulaumiwa wewe ndio utakuwa wakulaumiwa kutofanya kazi yangu sawa sawa we can go to the journal and contribute to the journal i believe some of you are using a uh, phones and hiyo ndio kila kitu hiyo ndio unapigiwa nayo simu hiyo ndio una type nayo ndio unasoma nayo so saa zile unapigiwa simu unaenda off anyway uh, just go and contribute to what i have put on the journal contribute to that activity 4.1 it's actually called uh, that activity we call it what that activity has a name that activity is a uh, is a journal that activity is called journal 